Guys, there's a lot of knives out here right now, and we're not going to talk about any specific knife. We are going to simply look at some trends in the knife world that I am pretty much just over. There's things that get done on knives that I don't actually like, and we're going to talk about what I find wrong with this Spyderco smock right now. All right, guys, I know that the Spyderco smock is a very popular knife and it has a nice blade profile and it does have a unique locking system. It's a button lock, uh, button version of the compression lock. So it's a button operated compression lock. So it is, it's got some really unique features and things like that. But the problem I have with this is to accommodate the lock mechanism on this and everything. There is a ton of wasted space in this area. If you look, I can't get in that forward choil there because it's not actually a choil. It's got a sharp spot, almost like a fish hook. Um, and so you're in a weird position that just doesn't accommodate a good use of the knife. It's a big amount of wasted space. EMP Nimble had the same issue. There's been several knives that have this big area here that you just really can't, like, can you get up on that? Yeah. But what happens is when I'm here, the knife addresses the cut. When I'm up here like this, it's kicked up at a weird angle. And I've just never found the smock comfortable in hand. It's already got a weird kind of edge alignment to the cut profile. And that wasted space right here just kind of sets me off. It's just one of those things I just can't get past. Uh, I do understand that that is to accommodate the stop pin and everything for the button lock version of the compression lock. I just, I just hate when there's that much wasted space in a knife. So uh, there's a lot of other knives that get done in a button lock fashion where you don't have that issue. You just could have went with a regular button lock where you're not wasting that and you could get all the way up on it and you don't have that big bulky space wasted. Uh, some knives have got it much more predominant than this. So uh, yeah, so there's my first one is just that wasted space at the pivot. The next one is something I thought was cool for a lot of years and I've absolutely completely changed my mind and that's polished anything. A uh, mere polish on anything is such a pain. If you've got a little bit, I mean, you can see even though I've tried so hard to take care of this and keep this mere polished, if you've got a little bit of grit in your pocket and you happen to touch anything, you can immediately see swirl marks and scratches and things on the blade. Even in the process of sharpening, if grit gets behind your edge on this, uh, you can see just those little spots where just even in sharpening, you'll get on that. Polished anything is a pain. And it's not as easy. People are like, oh, you can always just repolish it. It's not that easy. Getting a mirror polish and going back to a mirror polish is almost impossible if you don't have the right tools. You need specific abrasives. You need specific tools. You need specific polishes to get there. And to do it is just a nightmare. The other thing, too, is just in touching that, you have now, it's a fingerprint magnet. Are they attractive? Yes. Are they functional? No, I would not have anything polished on any knife that I carried on a regular basis. It just doesn't make sense. A polished stone wash is attractive. You can get by with that because it does hide some of the scratches, but just a strict mirror polish, I'm, I'm done with it. I'm pretty much over a strict mirror polish. So there you go, polished blades. This next one, I, I just, I have completely gotten over this Damascus anything. It uh, doesn't matter what type of Damascus, the, I'm, the, you know, Damacore, uh, is it attractive? Yes. Uh, but I'm over it because the thing is, it does a lot like the polished blades. Uh, you have some issues. So uh, if you use this knife a lot, you're going to slick up and scratch off this, and then you have to refinish and re-etch it. Can you do it? Yes. Uh, but the fact is, it's not a superior steel. Uh, the elements of a Dama steel that I like so much are the fact that it's basically RWL 34. At this point, I don't think I would buy a, I mean, and I'm talking like full dress knives in general, uh, using the Dama steel. Dama core. And the other thing is, there's a lot of inferior, uh, Damascus steels out there that people are using. I don't like hand-folded Damascus. You wind up with inclusions. You don't know um, necessarily that the steel is all going to harden uniformly and you run in into issues of um, delamination that you like, they're all like, no, we're really good at our Damascus. That's great. You still may get some delamination. The stainless steel Damascus are much better, but I'm just about over the look. Now, I will say the knife we just saw uh, that I put away, hang on a second, this knife. This knife is a very, very good use of Damascus steel or uh, Damascus steel. It's a pop. It's an inlay or as this pivot. It gives it a gorgeous touch. 
I don't mind that, but having the whole blade in Damascus, I'm pretty much over. Uh, so yeah, Damascus, Damascus blades in general. I'm pretty much, that's, that's a trend that like, if you like it, that's fine, but it's a trend that I'm pretty much done with. Since we talked about Damascus, we may as well throw Timascus in. And there's a couple reasons for that. One, it's insanely expensive to do anything in Timascus. I, uh, and I tried to find it a little bit ostentatious and over the top, even more so than Damascus. I don't mind so much like a pop of it, like this pocket clip or like this inlay. I would absolutely prefer for this inlay to be much smaller or done in like, have it like this and then a few dots of like a post. Um, on this. Um, this is absolutely a material that for two reasons I don't like. One, it's really easy to for it to lose this heat coloring. And then there is no real way. You can't just throw it back in and reheat color it. You have to sand this down flat, then reheat color it. And the other thing is it has a weird feel that I just don't like the way it feels in my hand. The texturing on it, I don't like the way it feels. And then, like I said, to it, it's just, it's a fingerprint magnet. It's really hard to do. If I was to redo this for my buddy, it would take a lot. I'd have to sand this, then polish it, then heat it. And then if I didn't get the color I wanted, I'd have to do that whole process over. Um, and it, it, it warps and things like that. So it's really hard to work with. And the other thing, like I said, as you carry it, you're going to definitely wear off that... Um, that coloring and then you have to process back through. I'm much more of a fan of doing something just in a small pop, like I said, uh, a smaller inlay or like, like on that last knife that I showed you with the Damascus pivot, something like that, or a pivot collar. So the bigger it gets in, in Timascus, the less I like it. So that's one I'm over with. It, and it's just kind of along the same lines as the Damascus steel. It's just something I just don't find as attractive as I used to. I think it's been overplayed and it's just a little bit too over the top. Guys, you guys know I love coffee. I even have my own personalized coffee mug. But did you know that a lot of the coffee companies out there take a lot of the money that you give them that they should be throwing back into the company to make a better product and turn it into activism dollars? Coffee Brand Coffee does not do that. They take no stance politically any direction. They take all the money that they make and try to make a better product. So if you want to support this channel and a company that I absolutely do like the fact that they don't lean either direction politically, check out Coffee Brand Coffee. There's a link down below that will save you 5% at checkout or or you can use the coupon code crazy sharp all one word capital c capital s crazy sharp all one word they also have cold brew coffee teas and cocos freshly ground and roasted to order so check them out support them and support this channel this next one might be the one that drives me the most crazy is bad pocket clips now i love kaiser knives i've said it a bunch of times but kaiser is famous for having bad pocket clips uh these deep carry pocket clips especially and it's the fact that they use the same pocket clip on every knife there's other companies that do that uh the smock the pocket clip that's on the smock is exactly the same as every other spyderco I find it to be a hot spot on this knife because of the hand positioning. Uh, and a lot of times, if you don't, if you use the same pocket clip on every knife, you run into some problems. On this, uh, on this drop bear, absolutely no issue. On this infinity, it's a little bit of a hot spot. And it's 100% something that can get, that can be done in a fashion that's not at all uncomfortable. Uh, I have had several knives that came in with this style pocket clip, which is a deep carry pocket clip, and you can see it transitions down, so it doesn't stay as tall as long. And so it goes, all uh, instead of coming up, this actually gets taller here than it is here. It's just uncomfortable. This transitions down nice and smooth. Um, all the Rosecraft knives I've had come in have this same pocket clip. Very, very comfortable pocket clip. Uh, here's another, this is that Nalu Designs, entity and it, it does not stay proud as long and does not present near as much of a hot spot on some knives it's not as bad this one is just starting to get into the realm of becoming uncomfortable but uh, other knives that have that style pocket clip can be incredibly uncomfortable and it's just all positioning um i wish companies would take a hint from some companies that allow the designers to design their own pocket clip and transitioning pocket clips and the fact is I'm not a big fan of deep carry cock pocket clip for the reason that a lot of people are. A lot of people are like, oh, it allows me to conceal my knife. 
No, it doesn't. Everybody sees a pocket clip. They know it's a knife. The thing is, it does get it deeper in your pocket. There's less chance you're going to scratch up your knife if you like the finish on your knife. Um, it does protect your hardware. And it allows you to carry this knife pretty far forward in your pocket so that you might be able to carry two knives if you want. But other than that, I really am not a fan of the deep carry pocket clips. It's a knife by knife thing. So I'm kind of over uncomfortable pocket clips in general. So there you go. Let's move on to the next one. And it's bad jimping. Um, I'm not a fan of jimping in general. I would prefer not to have jimping. But if you're going to put jimping on a knife, I want it to be jimping that's nice and crisp. It's got sharp edges. I don't want it to be something that when it went through the tumbler, it rounded everything off. There's almost no grip on that. It's, it, it's worthless. It does not catch. Uh, jimping can be big or small as long as it is very good and functional. Like I'm on that. It definitely locks me in. I love the jimping on this. Another knife that recently came in that you guys just saw a video of is this uh, something obscene J Cape. Very, very aggressive, sharp jimping. And that's the only place where the jimping is sharp. Um, if you don't get jimping right, it's just there as a, it's kind of a waste. Um, it, it, it detracts from the attractiveness of a knife when you put the jimping on it and it almost becomes just worthless. Like the jimping on this goes all the way back. As much as I love the stitch, uh, the stitch is one of my favorite knife designs. Microtech has done a really good job with it. It just kind of loses something when you don't have that jimping. Even with gloves on, this is so soft that it just, I don't think it would be really functional. Um, so yeah, that's just, that's one of those ones. If you're going to do jimping, do it right. If you're not going to do it right, don't do it at all. And this last one, I think a lot of people are going to have this same issue is really thick blade stock, not transitioning down. You can see, look how incredibly thick that is behind the edge. This is the, uh, Chavez 228, uh, Chavez knives 228, um, Chavez American made. I'm sorry. Um, this was a mid tech knife and this blade just really is thick behind the edge. Another knife that is pretty guilty of that is the Benchmade 940. Um, they used a thicker blade stock than they necessarily needed. They didn't transition that grind down as well. They could have, they could have done a full flat grind or a deep hollow and they could have accounted for that. And I'm just kind of over the really thick behind the edge overbuilt knives. Now I will say that Ramon kind of redeemed himself with the 229, the full production version of this knife, which is based on his custom redentions. And this is very nice and thin behind the edge all the way up to the tip. Beautifully done. Um, and another knife that really gets it right is you're going to see it again because it's been in my pocket and it's going to stay in my pocket for a while is this J Cape by something obscene. Nice, nice transition. And it, it's, it, they're very, very similar style blades and it's including grind. And yeah, they thin down nice and neat. Well, the nice thing about that is you're not losing much on the strength. This is kind of in that Goldilocks zone where you're not going to lose anything on the strength of the edge, but you're also getting a slicey, slicey knife because you've got a very thin behind the edge profile. As much as I've always wanted a 228 uh, or a Redencion, they are absolutely too thick to be a functional knife. And as much as I love the Benchmade 940, there's other knives in this size category, blade style, blade thickness that do a much better job. So blade stock thickness in and transitioning to a usable edge is a very important thing on a knife. So guys, that's it on this video. I hope you enjoyed it. These are just some of the things that are going on in a knife world that I'm not a fan of and I kind of wish would go away. So let's turn this around and do some final thoughts and send you out about your day. So there you go, guys. There's a lot of people that would absolutely disagree with me on a lot of those. I think the most important one for me is the very last one, and that's the blade stock thickness and transitioning to a good edge. Um, that is the most egregious of all of them, in my opinion, because like, even if you want an overbuilt knife, you still want to be able to cut with it. It's, it's not like you want to be able to break cinder blocks. And I think that that is the worst one. Um, I absolutely love the fact that the 229 rectified that um, from the 228 mid tech. So there's going to be another video with those two knives that you're going to see because I'm going to compare the two and I'm going to kind of talk about why mid tech knives have kind of just faded away. So guys, that's it on this one. Hopefully you liked the video. If you did give it a thumbs up, if you didn't give it a thumbs down, but tell me why I can't change the content. If you don't tell me what you don't like, that's one of the best things you can do. It helps push videos up the algorithm because interacting with videos, the best thing you can do. If you want to support the channel financially, I know I probably threw a coffee brand coffee ad in there somewhere. It was a pretty long video already, but you know, I gotta, I've got to use my sponsors to help support the channel because YouTube definitely isn't helping. Um, 
I have Tempered Trail also as a sponsor, Coffee Brand Coffee. And if you're looking for Rosecraft knives, I have a discount code. You can use the same coupon code at all of those to save 5%. Coffee Brand Coffee, the link is built right into, uh, the, the discount's built into the link that's down below. And it has a tendency to work better than the coupon code. We don't know why they're looking into it. Uh, I also have an Amazon store. Any, A lot of the things that you see on the channel can be purchased at the Amazon store. Take that link, pin it to your browser, use it for any shopping you do on Amazon. It supports the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. It makes Amazon pay me and you don't have to get dressed to do it. You can do it in your pajamas. And the final thing is I have a membership down below. It's all tier-based. All three tiers have access to my Gilded server. We hang out, goof off. That's also where I do giveaways for the baseline and premium tier guys. And the premium guys have access to a sharpening tutorial series that's exclusive to them here on YouTube behind that paywall. Guys, that's it on this one. I love you all. Keep it clean in the comment section. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. And I'll see you in the next video.